Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Well, we're talking about words, faith, and things. God's Word gets in your heart and produces faith for the things that God has given you. Now, the way that gets in your heart, it's in your mouth, and then it's in your heart. The Word is now you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. Now, let's go over to, to Romans, the third chapter. Let's talk a little bit about the law of faith. Faith is a law. Paul talked about faith being a law. I'm going to start back here in the 10th verse because there's some things here I want to point out uh, as we go through. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, Paul is quoting an Old Testament scripture. He says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They're all gone out of the way. They've all become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now, you hear people say sometimes uh, that, well, you know what the Bible says. And they get that whine in their voice, and they're probably going to tell you something the Bible didn't say at all, because you can have a statement in the Bible and it not be necessarily what the Bible said. Because if we say the Bible said, we're talking about a central truth that you can follow through the Scripture. Now, let's stop and ask ourselves about this scripture here because we've heard people say this. Well, you know, the Bible says there's none righteous. Well, then Jesus died in vain. Are you still there? Did you go home? No, no. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In fact, I heard your pastor preaching on that this morning. I mean, it's good, praise God. We need to realize that we are the righteousness of God. We may not look righteous. We may not feel righteous. We may not act righteous all the time, but the Word says you are, so you ought to confess it. But now, drop on down to verse 19, and this gives you understanding of what Paul's referring to. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. He's telling you that this scripture was written to the people under the law, not to New Testament Christians. You know, there was a certain denomination that wouldn't allow David Engel's tapes to be played in the church because he had a song that, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, that's the height of religious stupidity. I don't know any other way to say it. They said the Bible said there's none righteous. No, the Bible didn't say that. It is a statement in the Bible under the Old Covenant, but under the New Covenant, we have a better covenant established on better promises. Now, watch the teaching here where people will say, well, the Bible said. No, here's what the Bible said now. <laughs> therefore, verse 20, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, and upon all them that believe. Are you a believer? Yes. Upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we've been redeemed, we've been justified, we've become the righteousness of God. Verse 25 says, For God has set forth to whom God has set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifying him that believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. But what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Or no, by the law of faith. He calls faith a law of God. Now, Paul, in the, in the eighth chapter of Romans, he deals with this again. He says, the carnal mind is enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. 
Now, that's the reason you can't go by the carnal mind and please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith won't work in your head. Faith works in the heart. That's what Paul said. With the heart, man believeth. You have trouble with your carnal mind. And so many times you hear people say, well, the devil told me so-and-so. Well, it was their carnal mind. The devil may have used it, but uh, it was the devil working through their carnal mind because you can't believe with your carnal mind what you can believe with your heart. That's why it's important to get this word in your heart. It's not enough to just know it's there. It's not enough to know what it says. You've got to repeat it, proclaim it, uh, speak it, because faith cometh by hearing. Now, when Paul said faith cometh by hearing the word of God, the previous verses said it's first in your mouth and then it's in your heart. In other words, if you say it long enough, you believe it. Now, here he calls faith the law. I'm going to read it again. Where is boasting? It is excluded. We can't boast being the righteousness of God that we've done anything great. It wasn't something we did. It's something we believe. And it was imputed to us for righteousness. By what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. No, not, not the works of the law, but the law of faith. Now, come down to verse 31. Here's where it, it seems like a paradox. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. We establish the law. Now, wait a minute. Up here, he says, where is boasting, it is excluded. By what law? By the law, by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Then he comes down here and says, we establish the law. What's he talking about? The law of the new covenant is faith. Faith is the law of the new covenant. It's the only way you can enter into the grace of God. Come over here, chapter 5. Look at verse 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. Access by what? Faith. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. That's the only way you can access the grace of God. You can't do it by doing good things. You can't access the grace of God by, by joining a church or doing good things. You ought to do good things, but that won't get you in the grace of God. Faith gets you in the grace of God. It takes faith. That's why it's impossible to please God without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, Paul said the carnal mind in Romans 8, he said the carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Let's, let's come over to 8th chapter of Romans, the, the first, first few verses. Well, we do it in injustice if we don't mention the 7th chapter, because here's where a lot of people get confused. Paul talks about, and, and when you read this, you'll almost... <laughs> It's kind of confusing if you don't really study it out. He said, the thing I want to do, I don't do it. And the thing I don't want to do, I end up doing. And, and he said, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 22 says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Yeah, we're in Romans 7 now. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He asks a question, then he answers it. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I will serve the law of God. Mind, I myself will serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. In other words, if I go by what my flesh wants to do, I'll serve the law of sin. But now he said, so then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. Now, the mind that, that, that Paul talks about doing the spirit of your mind. In other words, this is where the power is in the spirit of the mind. Now, Paul, when he says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? In Jesus' day and in Paul's day, some of the Romans, this is the way, if they found somebody that had uh, committed murder, they took the victim that he had killed and the man that had committed the murder, and they strapped him face to face to that dead body until he died. 
Now, that's what Paul was referring to. He said, I'm strapped face to face with this body. I can't get out of it. I can't get away from it. I can't get away from the flesh. But he said, who will deliver me from the body of this death? In other words, he's talking about in the seventh chapter, the way you understand the seventh and the eighth chapter, the seventh chapter is talking about under the law. The eighth chapter is under the new covenant. Now, listen to what he says then when he says... Uh, in, in chapter 8, he says, Therefore, I, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about that law of faith again. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In other words, it diffused the law of sin and death. Under the old covenant, the soul that sinned shall die. Under the new covenant, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He diffused it. Now he comes on down to verse uh, 6 and says, For the carnal, be carnally minded to death, be spiritually minded to life and peace, because the carnal mind's enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, it has to get on the inside of you. It has to abide in you. It's more than just a, a head knowledge. It has to be in your spirit. It has to abide in you. Now, how is it we get the Word of God in us? All things created by words. All the promises of God in this book are to no avail unless there's faith involved in it. It's there, all right, and it's very valid. Give, and it shall be given unto you. But what if you say, yeah, but I gave, and it's not working? He shall have what's every sale. I mean, you can pray the best prayer and get up and confess that you don't have enough and, and, uh, and you've diffused the prayer. He shall have whatsoever he saith. This is the law of faith and this is how it works. Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not. And the saying has to do with what you believe. Sometimes we miss that. Now, one of the best illustrations I know to, to share with you how the Word of God gets on the inside of you, faith gets on the inside of you, is that God's Word is filled with faith. If there wasn't, you couldn't get any faith by hearing the Word of God. Now, see, I'm a pilot. I've been flying for nearly 50 years. And I didn't just wake up some morning and say, I believe in airplanes. I guess I can fly one. No. No. I had to, I had to learn how to operate in the principles and apply the principles of aerodynamics to fly. Now, an airplane wing is designed to produce lift. Now, there is a law of God. It's called the law of gravity. We all understand that pretty well, that everything that's heavier than air, if you turn it loose in the air, it's going to the floor or to the ground. And everything being normal, that's where it's going to stay. But they discovered that you can put some other laws into motion and overcome the law of gravity. Now, follow me closely because this will give you an understanding that Satan can't steal it from you. The curses are out there in the world. Have you noticed? You don't have to plant dandelions in your yard. <laughs> the curses are here. God didn't send the curses. They came with Satan. So you don't have to, to plant the curses out there. They're there. Sickness and disease is a fact in this world, but the Word of God can change fact. It's a temporary fact. There is no permanent evil. Now, the Word of God tells us that we're redeemed from the curse of the law, but yet the curses are still here. But you can overcome them with faith. Paul said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good, the good word of God. Jesus said, the good man out of the good deposit of his heart, he bringeth forth good things. How does he do that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's abundant in your heart? Have you noticed it'll get in your mouth? You can't talk sickness and disease to live in health. It's an impossibility. 
You have to talk positive on the blessings of God and the promises of God. Now, an airplane wing is designed to produce lift. Now, you can look out on that airplane wing. You can pull that thing out on the end of the runway and look out there and say, is any lift on that wing? I don't know. Can't see anything. Don't see a thing but a bug crawling across there. There's nothing on that wing. There is no lift on that wing. And the ministry airplane, 421, the thing weighs about a little over three tons, nearly four tons. Now, we're expecting that thing to put a law in motion that you can't see, feel, or touch, or taste, or smell, and overcome the law of gravity, and that four tons of metal is going to fly like a bird. You've got to have faith. We believe in the law. Now, see, they discovered that you can put the law of lift into motion, law of thrust and lift. Take two laws of thrust, thrust that wing through the air. The wing is designed like this. It is oval shape on top, generally speaking, pretty much flat under the bottom. So when it's thrust through the air, the air hits the leading edge of this wing, and it shoots over the top, and the other goes under the bottom. Now, when it goes over the top, it doesn't just follow that wing just right over the top. Because of the speed of the air, the leading edge of this wing causes it to shoot up like this. And on an airliner, if you've ever ridden in an airliner and it come in when it was re real heavy moisture in the air and they put those flaps down, you can see that moisture in the air coming up, and it'll come up three foot over the top of that wing sometimes and flow back down. Now, the, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So that that goes underneath the wing has less distance to travel to get to the trailing edge than that that goes over the top. Now, when it goes over the top, it has to get to the trailing edge of that wing at the exact same time that the air that went under here, or if you didn't, you'd drag air all the way from here to New Orleans or wherever you're going. It's just a law of aerodynamics. So to do that, it travels a greater distance, probably twice to three times the distance. So what does it do? It has to speed up. That's why. On an airline, you see moisture showing up in the air over the wing. Why didn't you see it under the wing? Because it speeded up so fast, it made the moisture visible to the eye. It was change. So when it goes over like that, it creates a low pressure area here. See, when you shoot air up over like this, it creates a vacuum. We'd call it a vacuum. Now. We have high pressure underneath, and you have a low pressure on top of the wing. And what does a high pressure try to do? Fill a low pressure. So you have a vacuum on top of the wing sucking it up. And you have underneath air going underneath, sensing that low pressure area and trying to go up through that wing and fill it, but it can't. It has aluminum there. And guess what? It's called lift. And it was created by thrusting this wing through the air at a certain speed. Now, if you don't ever get that airplane to that certain speed, it will not fly. And you'll run off the other end of the runway, and it's bad news all over again. Now, that'll tell you why that some things don't work in some for some people. They never get the thrust of faith. Now, now remember, this wing creates its own lift as you thrust it through the air. Here's the way the Lord explained it to me. Because I was complaining to the Lord one day, and I said, you know, that this has been several years ago. I said, Lord, things not going like it was a few years ago. Uh, uh, what, what's the problem here? He said, check up on yourself. What were you doing several years ago that you're not doing now? So I got to thinking, well, I was confessing the word every day, every day, every day. Wouldn't dare miss a day. And it, it had kind of got to be a hit or miss proposition. He said, your confession of the word of God and the word of promise is to your faith like thrust is to that airplane. 
He said, you pull back on the confession and you don't have enough speed to cause to overcome the curses of life. The thing's still on the ground. I mean, you're going down that runway, the grasshoppers and the bugs, the curses are hitting the windshield, and you two-thirds away down that runway, and the curse is still hitting the windshield. Then we're going to say, flying doesn't work. Oh, yeah. Why don't I pull the throttle back and say, shut her down. It's not going to work this time. I have too much knowledge to do that because I know that a certain speed will create the exact amount of lift to cause that thing to soar like a bird. And, and when you're two-thirds of the way down the runway, you don't have enough speed sometimes on my runway. But just keep the power on the thing, and it will, whether it's raining or sun shining, there's a law involved here, and it's, it will fly like a bird. It will overcome the curses, and it'll fly above the curses of life. You're not going to do away with sickness and disease till you get Satan off this planet. But you can overcome it. You won't do away with poverty until you get Satan off this planet. But you can overcome it by the promises of God's Word. Now, just imagine you're sitting at the end of the runway, and you're facing problems in life that it looks like it's going to take a miracle to soar above. But the Word of God tells you how to do it. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That wing creates the lift. The confession of God's Word creates the faith to cause you to receive the promises of God, the manifestation of the promise of God. And it'll work every time that it's done properly. Now, there are certain things that, that sometimes, like I said, uh, people, people haven't confessed the Word enough to get the, the Word of God in them. Remember, Jesus said the Word, a good man out of the good deposit of his heart. In other words, if it abides in there, if it's there, he brings forth good things. Now, who did he say brought it forth? Was it the man or was it God? No, God furnished the word, but the man's the one that brought it forth. How did he do it? For out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaketh. But if it's not abundantly in the heart, you can't speak it forth. I've heard people say, oh, I wouldn't dare say that because it might not happen. It won't. Don't worry about it. Jesus said to the disciples, one day he said, if you had faith as a seed, you would say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. If you had faith as a seed, as a mustard seed, the mustard seed, the reason he said mustard seed, mustard plant is a plant you cannot crossbreed, you cannot cross-pollinate with any other plant. If you had faith that won't change, you would say, to whatever your problem you're facing. You'll never hinder me again as long as I li live. You hear me saying it? You're removed and cast into the sea, planted in the sea. Now, you want to know what Jesus said? Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be plucked up, be pl uh, planted in the sea, it should be cast in the sea, it should obey you, should obey your words. Words released in faith is power to change things. See, we're talking about words, faith, and things. God's Word produces the faith for the things that God's given you. Now, isn't that simple? And that's the only way it comes. Faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. Now, if you're hearing yourself say what God said, it comes more quickly and more profoundly. That airplane will sit there on the runway till the tires rot off of it. And you can pray and fast that that thing will get lift on the wing and there'll be no lift on that wing until you thrust it through the air. The Lord said to me this. He said, your confession of the Word of God is to your faith like thrust is to that airplane. If you confess the Word of God, I'm talking about audibly where you hear it with your own voice over and over and over daily, make it a process. I mean, what, what promise do you want manifest in your life? Where would you get the faith for that promise? From the promise itself. So whether it's healing, whether it's finances, get it in your mouth. Put it on a tape recorder. Listen to it. And if you have one of those tape recorders that run all night, run it all night. You'll get it. 
The word is nigh you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. God's word produces faith for the things that God has given us. Now, isn't that simple? But it must be abundantly in your heart. Like Jesus said, it must abide in you. I'm glad you could join us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. Now, before we leave the broadcast, I have a tape offer this week that I'm excited about. Uh, we've, we've talked about words, faith, and things. Now, we have a two-tape series that's called Words, Faith, and Things. A uh, two-tape album, uh, it's, it's called Offer Number 2251, and it's $12 plus $3 postage and handling, total of $15. Offer number 2251. Now, this little album, it doesn't look like there's two tapes in it, but there is. And in this album, we talk about how words, God's Word, produces the faith for the things that God has given us. Now, I get amused at the faith critics sometimes. They say, uh, well, you know, these faith folks think that all there is to the Bible is faith. Well, certainly there's more to the Bible than faith, but have you noticed that none of it will work without faith? It's impossible to please God without faith, the Scripture says. Now, in this two-tape series, we point out the fact that it is God's Word that produces the faith for the things He's given us. Now, we're not talking about something God doesn't want you to have. We're talking about what God's already given you. Second Peter chapter 1 says, God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue. And it says, through the exceeding great and precious promises, by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Now, it didn't say you would be. It said you might be. And it's through faith. God's word produces a faith for the things that he has given you. Now, we know Jesus said, Whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not in his heart, believe what he's saying will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. But see, the key there is you've got to believe it. So words produce the faith for the things God has given you. God's word produces the faith. That's where God's, uh, the faith of God is resident in his word. It gets in you when it speak, you speak it. Paul said it's, it's in your mouth and in your heart. First it's in your mouth, then it'll get in your heart. So this is offer number 2251. It's called Words, Faith, and Things. Now, once you get the Word of God in your heart in abundance, you speak words that will cause things to come about in your life. That's offer number 2151, and it's $12 plus $3 postage and handling. God bless you. We appreciate you joining us for the broadcast. Until next time, this is Charles Capps telling you that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is Lord. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by CAPS Ministries.